paper and then I. Okay. All right, we're recording to the computer. All right. All right. Do you guys want me just to jump in or did Chantal and Brad have anything you wanted to say first? I can I can jump in and just uh, you know welcome everybody. So good morning, everyone. I'm Brad Bullish from the Connecticut State Library. I'm the Digital Content and Innovation Coordinator there, and we are lucky to have some folks from uh, EBSCO showing us the new Explorer interface today. Uh, we apologize for the mix up on the link, um, but we're glad you were all able to get here. Um, we're going to record this today and we will post it on the website. Um, so when you come back from summer vacation, if you're a teacher, um, you will be able to at least review the, uh, the session. Um, so we will, I will pass it over to Megan and Chantel at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Chantal, you good or you want me to just go? Yeah, uh, I just want to thank everyone for your time. Um, and I am Chantel, I'm your regional sales manager. And if any questions come up after this, please feel free to reach out to me um, and I'm happy to answer any questions individually. And Megan, I'll let you take it from here. All right. So I'm Megan Allen. Um, I run product management at EBSCO for our school and public library databases, um, including Explora. So my team owns um, the Explora interface and the updates there. Um, so Explora, um, which is on your screen right now, this is the secondary schools version, um, is our user experience for our school and public library audience. Um, based on extensive user research, customer feedback, um, we recently redesigned this interface to offer a more modern and efficient search experience um, for all devices. Um, the idea is this will make it easier for our students and educators and patrons at your public libraries um, to find credible information, um, to do their homework, to do research projects, um, to deliver curriculum, um, achieve any professional goals they have, and just satisfy intellectual curiosity. This new site that you see here is launching in July. Um, and then we have some further updates that I'm going to show you in a few minutes um, on what's coming in the fall. So the, the launch right now is just a little bit of a rescan to get you on the new UI. Um, and then we have some more exciting things coming later. So as for what you see here, um, what makes up the new Explora is first we have the standard EBSCO search bar. Um, it's simplified on this home page, but it does support advanced search queries. So for example, this is a subject search for Dolly. And we see when it executes, you now have the full search experience. And it also searches and includes diacritic marks and the results, all the same search enhancements that you get um, from standard of scope. Um, there's also personalization. So if you're interested in creating an individual account, which um, makes it easier to save and organize your research, um, this enables all these options over here on the dashboard. Um, you can do that by registering over here and creating a personal account. What's also important is preferences. So this is where you can change the interface language quite easily if you need to. Just like that. And we will be adding Spanish and French in the next couple of weeks. We were just discussing that this morning. Let's go back to the home page. Yes, and Chantel pointed out you can also use Google Sign In. Um, so back on the home page, what really makes Explora? Explora is the featured content. Um, we have a team of librarians and writers who maintain um, our collection of topic overviews, which are these here. So these are short introductory articles. They're like encyclopedia entries. They cover tens of thousands of topics and they're incredibly valuable to users at starting their research. The length and depth of each article is tailored to the reading level of the audience. So right now, this is the secondary content. If we were looking at primary, it would be in a lot more um, elementary school level tone of voice, um, sentence structure, that sort of thing. Now, our product management team, my team, um, curates a list of topics that are featured here um, on this hero in the homepage. 
And depending on what version of Explorer you're using, these selections, um, they can be seasonal, they can be news driven, um, they might be based on popular curriculum where we're rolling out the science and history version of Explora um, soon too. And what it does is it rotates through what we feature, um, what topics we've chosen to feature for any given time period. So we, we are due to update these, we're doing it this week. So swapping from um, sort of the spring to the summer topics. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But this is just a, a nifty way to give students somewhere to start with um, when they first log onto the site, when they aren't really sure what they wanna research. Um, so in, then going on to the explore topics section. So here we've categorized the full list of topic overview articles. You know, I mentioned there were tens of thousands of them um, so that students can easily browse these areas and start their research. So when they click on a category, they go to the topic page that lists all of the overviews currently available in that area. Right now, this is a simplified A to Z listing with this tile view. They can also swap over to a list view like that. They can jump to specific parts of the alphabet. Um, but I'm gonna show you some enhancements here that are coming in the fall. Um, right now, um, so the goal of the Explore homepage is to, as I mentioned, just help users that are not experienced researchers and they're not really ready to dive into a search yet. So it's meant to help students that um, have been tasked with picking um, a topic for a paper or um, just exploring areas when they're not really sure um, where they wanna begin. Um, and they find that search box, just the blank search box at the top of the screen a bit intimidating. Um, so once they have chosen a topic and started to execute a search, they land on the search results page. Um, and now it's, it's consistent with EDS and EBSCO hosts and what they're used to um, on our other EBSCO sites. Um, when you run a search, some of the elements you'll have on the search page is if there's a topic overview available, you see that featured you know, front and center at the top. Um, you can see the search filters easily accessible right there. Full text articles can be viewed immediately. That's we did with the topic overviews. I'll show you another way. So that was the topic overview. Here's an actual article you can access now. Same idea. There are more details on each article here to help with citing. You also see the Lexile range for as much content as um, possible on Explora. We provide a Lexile score. And then there's also an array of tools that are now standard across our new UI and EBSCO. Um, for citing. So this is our new site tool. And swap through different standards. You can export them. You can save. So this is some of the, the dashboard functionality I mentioned, um, which I'm not going to go into today because this is shared um, across EDS. Um, but if you, you do want to save items, they pop into your dashboard here. And then sharing. So most notable here would be our Google Drive integrations, our OneDrive integrations, and our permanent linking feature. So that is what's coming out in just a couple of weeks in July, um, but I also wanna hop over to the prototype to show you what's coming in the fall. Um, because you know you probably noticed it's really just a bit of a reskin right now, as I mentioned, um, the goal of, of July's migration is to get you guys onto the new UI, um, get you ready for these great new features that are coming and integrate some of the features that Explora hasn't had um, that shared functionality with the rest of EDS and eHost um, for the past few years. So now it's all on a shared platform, we can update quicker, that sort of thing. Um, but what you're looking at now on the screen, this is a prototype of what's to come. So here you see we have the same homepage, the contents are just a little bit different because this is a design file. Um, and you'll see the feature topics, you know, the, the um, navigation here and the hero that rotates. 
Um, but what I really want to show you is topic explorer, which is how we're fleshing out this topic section. Um, and we're sorry, we're also adding, um, I forgot to mention the magazines, um, the ebooks and magazine carousel down here at the bottom. So we'll be featuring um, ebooks content here uh, as appropriate. And then we'll be swapping through that the same as we do the feature topics. Um, but as for topic explorer, so this is how category browse is going to be evolving. And instead of going to that sort of one dimensional A to Z list that I showed you before, um, this is going to go to a little bit more deeper, better organized category. So for instance, animals breaks down like this. Um, and you can see that it's a little bit more popular categories. It's more colloquial. It, it could be curriculum based um, subtopics. It just makes sense. Um, and it's a lot friendlier to the younger or novice researcher. Um, and then these categories break down even further. So for instance, birds, now we start getting into the list of birds. And then if I were to focus on, for instance, bald eagle, and this is the next um, sort of great feature that we're adding, which is the topic page. And once you get into a topic page, um, it can feature all sorts of things to help the researcher. So if there is a topic overview available, that will be there. If there are even more subtopics, those are featured there. So here you see the list of different types of eagles in our topic overview list. And then there's related topic overviews. So this is things that can be a little bit more tangential. So, um, you know, this is a sports team. This is an eagle ray. It's obviously not a bird. Um, this, I believe, is a book, that sort of thing. We have a quick search snippet. So if they do want to dive right in and start their search, there's, you know, the first three search results. And then there's ebook results um, related to the same topic. So these are dynamic pages. There'll be one for pretty much every topic as you move through those trees. Um, these tested extremely well with students um, and this whole suite of topic explorer and topic overview pages um, are gonna be coming out in the fall. The other thing about this that I'll mention um, is these categories here, you know, we've been, this is really where we've been putting most of our work. So you'll see these across every major category. Um, but these are the, the primary school ones at the moment. Um, you'll see them in the other arrays of subject areas and content that we're moving to explore. So I mentioned science is coming out soon, um, as is history. Um, literature will follow, um, biographies, our points of view reference center is going to follow the same pattern. Um, and we've just we've been working diligently to create those those trees. Um, and that's that's really it. So I'm gonna open it up for any questions? I have a quick question for you. Sure. I noticed that you have Choices Magazine as one of the options. Would teachers be able to use that with Google Classroom and assign articles from it? Uh, where, which screen did you see? If you scroll down just a little bit, it was on that screen you were just on. Choices, right? That um, fourth one. Oh, right there. Oh, Scholastic. Um, and the question was, would they be able to share that in Google Classroom? Yeah, so would they be able to choose an article from that magazine and post it in their Google Classroom? Yeah, if you if you subscribe to the content, um, so nothing will show here that you don't subscribe to, um, and you've got Google Classroom set up, then yes, absolutely. Okay, so I guess you know we get this through research it through the state. Is that part of the subscription? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So Megan, these database these magazines are coming from the database content, not. Flipster or both down here on the carousel? Um, these will, right here in the carousel, um, it'll be from the database content. Okay. Um, it's going to be ebooks to start with because ebooks are what we're already prepared to do. Um, and we'll be expanding it to magazines kind of depending on um, when it's available. We don't have cover images for everything yet. Um, so think of it as ebooks to start with. Okay. 
Megan, can you, um, I'm looking at the top under the search bar and it says peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. So what, it defaults to that or I'm curious that's just a quick filter. So that's one of the things that's universal in the new UI is they've exposed these quick filters. So the idea is if you want to quickly add them before you run a search, you can. Um, peer review is by default not available on the primary element. Um, right, obviously. Explorer right. version, yeah. Um, but it's not applied by default, no. So if I hop over, I'll just go ahead and I'll just click on NATO. So it's not applied. Online full text is but peer reviewed. Now I've turned on peer review. So what does the yellow, I, I guess I'm just trying to. It, I can give that feedback to the wider group. Um, it's just iconography to help you see what it means because when something is peer reviewed, it matches. I know, I'm just thinking of them. my mm -hmm. high schoolers that that would be distracting. I was just curious. Yeah. yeah okay, that's thank you. Megan, will you go back to that, um, um, the newest coming out in the fall? Mm -hmm. um, up at the top of the pre-search filters. Can you, if, if some, if a school is defaulting to full text, can we hide that? Are we gonna have the capability to hide that full text just to have less there? Um, not to my knowledge, okay. but um, I'd have to follow up on that one because a lot of these things are, at this point, we're talking about shared componentry. Um, yep. That's yep. not, yeah, not necessarily unique to Explora. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, um, thank you, Megan, that was great. Appreciate that. Brad, did you want to say anything before we close this out? I just wanna thank everyone for attending. I wanna thank Megan for the great information there. Um, and I do just wanna point out that the interface that we're looking at today isn't necessarily the researcher interface. So the content may differ. I believe I'm correct about that, right, Sean? Yeah. So, yep. um, so that's, and I'm not sure if we actually, you know, for the question about choice magazine, I'm not sure we had that in our subscription. Um, from what I saw, I don't believe we do, unfortunately. So, um, so once we have our interface up there, it'll only populate with content that the state library has access to. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions, thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time. And if you do have any follow-up questions um, that come up, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And my email is s-r-e-m-y at ebsco.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.